Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to start a gardening blog. So be sure to like, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when I upload a brand new video. Basically what we are going to do today is I'm going to review what a gardening blog is with a few examples. I'm going to show you how and why it's very important to pick a niche and then why you need to niche down. In addition, I'm going to show you how to get started with web hosting and why you need web hosting so that you can have a blog or website. And if you click the first link in the description, you can get a free domain name for free for the first year. After that, we are going to talk about installing WordPress, how to install a WordPress theme, what, what a WordPress theme is, and how to get a premium WordPress theme. In addition, I'm going to reveal to you important changes that you absolutely have to make in order for your website to start getting traffic, how and why to start writing. In addition, we are going to talk about some different ways that you can make money why you need to share your content on social media in the very beginning, about how many blog posts you need to write, and then the three links in the description that we are going to discuss throughout this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. What is a gardening blog? A gardening blog is simply a blog that you are going to put together where you're answering questions about the gardening niche. Now, when people are interested in gardening or they maybe they have a, a knowledge gap, they're coming to the internet and they're looking for a solution. In fact, this is an example of someone coming to the internet looking for a solution. You wanna know about starting a gardening blog and I'm providing that solution for you. Now, let me just show you an example of a gardening blog and we're gonna talk about picking a niche as well. So if we go over to this website, awaytogarden.com, you can see this is a gardening blog that answers basic questions. So if we go back here, you can see they have questions. They have a podcast too, but you can see really they've designed their blog so that they can help solve problems. People are asking questions about how to harvest garlic and they've created content to do that. And you're basically going to do the same thing. Since this website has been around for a long time, it's kind of grown past just the gardening space. But as you can see, they started out at one point talking about gardening. But let's go ahead and talk about picking a niche. Now, in my opinion, gardening is not a niche. It's a topic. It's a top level idea or theory. And I just want to show you how difficult it can be to rank for the keyword gardening. A lot of people are writing content in that space. And if we look at this on a difficulty level from 0 to 100, 78 is pretty difficult. And so what you'd want to do is you'd want to niche down. You may want to talk about individual types of gardening, more, maybe organic gardening, or maybe talk about planting tomatoes. In fact, what I did was I jumped over here and I typed in how to plant. If we look at the keywords here, it's rated only at 16. So you can see it's much easier. In addition, I, I'm looking at the matching terms here and you're going to see there's over 724,000 keywords, or excuse me, there's over 724,000 monthly searches, and there's over 152,000 keywords. As you can see, it says how to plant garlic. That is significantly easier. How to repot a plant. This, these are significantly easier than just gardening, and you could potentially do this too. Uh, now, not every word on here is going to be uh, available to you or even make sense for your niche, but... How to plant tulips, only a 17. How to plant a peach seed, only a seven. As you can see, there's some opportunity if you niche down. And that's what I think you should do if you're just getting started. You wanna go out and find questions that don't have a lot of a lot of information or the information isn't relevant or topical, and you're gonna go out and solve those problems. How to plant a, a avocado seed, it has 40, so it's a little bit more competitive but you can see there's a lot of opportunity out there. So the next thing that we want to do, if we go back over to our slide deck, we've talked about gardening, we've picked a niche and we've niched down. The next thing that you want to do is you want to go out and you want to get web hosting. Now, in order for your website to be seen by people across the internet, you need somewhere to host your website. You're going to put your internet files on a server that you rent from Bluehost in this case, so that people from around the world can see your website. And so when you click that first link in the description and you sign up for web hosting, you're going to have the ability for your web pages, your website to be seen around the world. In fact, when you click that first link in the description, you can get a domain name for free for the first year. Now, a domain name is simply a name that your audience is going to refer to your website by. For example, awaytogarden.com is the domain name, and you're actually going to have your own domain name so people can visit your site and refer to your site as well. And what we're going to do right now is I'm actually going to walk you through the steps, step by step, on how to get web hosting and a domain name. Now, believe it or not, you can get up and running in less than 10 minutes, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. When you click that link, you'll be taken to this website where you'll go ahead and click Get Started. 
What I recommend is to click the first one on the far left, the basic plan, if you're just getting started with a website. As you can see, there are a number of options, but click that, click select, and then move on. Here, you're going to create a domain name. If you have one in mind, you can type it in here like you see that I do. What I recommend is try and find a domain name that's going to be related to your niche. Now, what I do is I type in a domain name that I know is already taken. When it's taken, you're going to get this error. What you can then do is go back and try different domains. Now, make sure again, you want to pick one that's related to your niche. Click next, and then you're going to see a green box that says that it's approved. The next step is simply to go through and enter in your contact information. Make sure that you, when you scroll down here, make sure that you leave all of the settings on. Um, but Again, enter in your contact information, the settings right here where it says domain privacy, leave all of this checked. If you don't leave it checked, you're going to get people reaching out to you, uh, spamming you, emailing you, trying to get you to sign up for web hosting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sign up and then jump back to you once I sign on and move to the next step. All right, so I have signed up and I'm going to go ahead and set up my website initially. Just create a simple username and password, make sure it meets the requirements there and then move on. Um, make sure that you write it down too. Write it down in a safe spot so that you have it and you remember it because it can be a pain to go ahead and get everything back. You're gonna have to enter in like some vital information, but just make sure that you write it down. It's really easy and really simple. Now, one thing that I do wanna note is that this part is not sped up at all. This is actual real time and you can see that you'll go from absolutely nothing to a complete website in less than probably 10 minutes. And once you click submit, you're gonna move on to the next step where you get to log in. Here is where you're actually going to start creating your WordPress website. Now, the great thing is, is Bluehost really does everything for you and it's really simple. So again, I'm not speeding this up at all and I want you to see what it really takes to create a website. Bluehost is gonna do a little bit of work in the background for you and we're just gonna actually click on skip this step. This one, first one I clicked on, start a blog but for the next step just click skip because we know what we're doing and i'm actually going to tell you what to do so that we can get up and running click get started right here on the left hand side and then move on just click skip here and click skip here and then just pick the first one in the far left make sure that you're picking a free theme because they'll charge you they have both free and premium themes which i'll talk about in just a moment so right now it's actually creating your wordpress website in just a few moments, you're going to click on log in to WordPress on the right hand side there. You'll see it in just a second. And then we can actually start looking at some basic configurations. All right. So we click log in and now we actually have a WordPress website. What may need to happen is you may need to click refresh a few times to get it to, to work. But now we have our website, as you can see. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to log in and delete a few plugins because right now it has the coming soon and so if someone tried to get to your website at this moment, it's going to say coming soon to them, even though we can see it. This is what your WordPress website looks like. But for everyone else outside of your network, it's going to say coming soon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to plugins eventually, and we're going to delete some of the plugins that we don't need. Now, I talk a little bit about plugins later on, but um, plugins add additional features and functionality. We are going to deactivate the Bluehost as well as the um other plugins that are already activated and then we can go through and make the necessary changes which i'll cover in just a moment so we're going to deactivate them and then delete them now you want to make sure that you only have the plugins that you're using on your website the more plugins you have the slower your website's going to respond and, and function and you're going to lose out on ranking so make sure you have a lean setup very few plugins and then move on as you can see right now i'm just simply deleting some stuff that you don't need if you want to, you could keep them, but obviously if, if you're just getting started, you don't need this other stuff. What's more important is the themes that we're going to talk about in just a moment, as well as getting writing. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete, delete those, deactivate them, and then we're actually going to start moving on to settings, which you see right here. All right, so let's go ahead and make some changes that we absolutely have to make so that you can start getting traffic. The first thing that you want to do is you want to change your site title. Your site title is going to be the title of your website. You can make this basically your domain name. For example, my domain name is Web Hosting Rewind, and you can see that's my site title. And then the tagline is basically what your website's all about in a very succinct manner. As you can see here, mine says, get the latest news and info on all things web hosting. What you want to do is make sure that yours is relevant to your niche. For example, if you are creating content about makeup, you can say, come here for the latest tips and tricks for all things makeup. 
Next, you want to make sure that your WordPress address is HTTPS and not HTTP. Make sure your site address is HTTPS as well. And then the administration email should automatically be set. Um, uncheck the membership so that anyone can register. Make sure that this is unchecked. Um, if we scroll down here, you want to change your time zone to your time zone. There are all sorts of them here. Next, you want to make sure that you have your date format set to the way you want, and then go ahead and click Save. If we go down to Writing, there isn't anything in Writing that we need to change. After that, we're going to go to Reading. In Reading, very important, you want to make sure that your homepage displays to your latest post. That's the first thing. And the second one is you want to make sure that your search engine visibility is unchecked. Do not check this. Discourage search engines from indexing this site. You do not want this. Because if this is checked, people aren't going to be able to find your website and everything that we do after this is going to be a waste. So go ahead and click save. This should be unchecked. Next, if we go down to discussion, there really isn't anything that we need to change here. Media, we can leave this as is. And then permalinks is going to be really important. Right now, your permalinks are set to plain. You want to change it to post name. This is done for search engine optimization. What's going to happen is when we create a new blog post, we are going to make it so that it's search engine optimized. We're going to use the keyword in our title. And that keyword is going to show up right here as well. And this is called search engine optimization. Make sure that it's set to post name and then go ahead and click save. And really that's everything that you need to do to make sure that you start getting traffic. All right. So now that we've installed WordPress, we've got our free WordPress theme. I'm actually going to tell you how to get a premium one right now. We've also made important changes that we absolutely have to make so that we can start getting traffic leads and start making some money. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about a premium WordPress theme. Now, right now you have a free basic theme, but what I recommend that you do is go out and get a premium theme. A premium theme is going to add more features and flexibility. For example, if we go over here to this website called uh, ThemeForce, it's the second link in the description. We type in gardening and hit enter. You're going to see there's WordPress themes that are designed for gardening. These WordPress themes range anywhere from $20 to about $100, but they add additional features and functionality. As you can see, it says import demos, drag and drop builder. These are things that won't be available on free themes. So what you're going to do is once you find a premium theme on this website, you are going to click this button, add it to the cart. When you add it to the cart, you're going to check out and you're going to pay for this theme. And then you're actually going to download a zip file to your computer. When you get that zip file, you are going to unpack or unzip that zip file. And there's going to be a second zip file there, which we are actually going to use. And we're going to put it right into our WordPress website. And to do that, we're going to go back over here. We're going to go down to appearance. We're going to click themes. And then we're going to click on add new after that we are going to click on upload theme and then we are going to drag and drop that second zip file that we found we're going to drag and drop it right here or you can also click on choose file either one is up to you once we have it we are going to click on install now and then we are going to activate it that is how you change your wordpress theme easy as can be and so now that we have a different wordpress theme we need to start writing as you can see here we're down here at start writing and what we're going to do is we are going to write based on these keywords that we found. For example, how to plant garlic might be something that we'd want to help our customers or help our, our readers learn more about. And to do that, we are going to go to posts. We are going to click on add new and we are going to paste in our keyword that we found over on our keyword research tool. And the two questions that I get, I get three questions a lot when it comes to creating blogs. How long should my blog post be? How many blog posts should I write? And how do I start writing? And I'll answer two of those questions now. I'll answer the third one in just a moment. But how long should your blog post be really all depends on your competition and how long it takes you to answer the question thoroughly. Now, it is important that when you're writing a blog post that you only write as long as it needs to be. If you can answer that question in 500 words, that's how, that's how long it should be. You don't need to take 2,000 words to answer a 500 word blog post. That, that's important to remember. You don't get extra credit. You don't get bonuses. No one's going to give you a pat on the back if you spend 5,000 words to answer a 500 word blog post. Now, the other question that I get is how do I start writing? And I like to do the simple method that we learned back in elementary school. Uh, who, what, when, where, why and how. So before I actually go out and write my blog post, I like to just do this on a Google Sheet or a Google Doc where I'll uh, I'll write down these six 
question starters and I'll come up with different questions based on these starters. And I, I basically just take 10 minutes to think about it and it helps me fill up my blog post even more and it helps me thoroughly answer the question. So when I'm brainstorming, I'll say, what types of garlic can be planted? For example, now, not every question that you write down is gonna be a good one, but you get the idea. Where to plant a garlic seed? Or uh, can a seed be planted in heavy sunlight? We'll say. Again, you're not worried about giving spelling, grammar, punctuation. You are simply brainstorming. And if you spell words wrong, that's fine. You are just trying to get a bunch of ideas out there so that you can actually answer the question and solve your reader's problem. Now, again, you want to make sure that you're looking at your competitors, see what your competitors are doing. If your competitors are writing a 400 word blog post, then you need to write about 600 to 1000 to make sure that you're answering the question. So if we scroll down here, I just pasted in how to plant garlic. I'm going to click on this and let's see how long this blog post is. This is probably about 700 words. And let's see here. I'm just going to right click and it's 785. So I was off by just a little bit. It's, it's 700 words, but they might have left something out. So how to plant garlic. And if you look at my questions over here, can a seed be planted in direct sunlight or heavy sunlight? That might be something that people want to know. Where can a garlic seed be planted? Where can't it be planted? These are all going to be pieces of information that potentially, if you're brand new to gardening or gardening gar garlic, that might be something that they want to know. So I'll just go through, spend 10 minutes brainstorming. And then what I'll do is I'll keep all of the good questions and I'll turn those good questions into headings. This is an H1. This is an H2. I'll just turn that into a heading and I'll say, I'll say, I'll answer the question. Yes, you can plant garlic in direct sunlight. Okay. You might want to add more information so that you are answering the question fully and you do that until you have a completed blog post. Once you have a completed blog post, go ahead and click publish. When you click publish, it will be live for the world to read, see, and hear. The next step after that is to figure out how we can make money. If you see here, make money with your blog. And there are a number of ways to make money. When we look at this website, it does not look like this website is taking advantage of ads, but really ads are the first way that you can make money with your website. What you'll do is you'll work with a website called Google AdSense, and you can actually work with them and they'll automatically place ads on your website. Now know that when you work with Google AdSense, you are not going to make a bunch of money. You are going to get paid pennies on the dollar, but it's proof that money is coming in. That might be all the incentive you need to continue to write. Once you start getting significant traffic, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 page views per month, you can work with premium ad networks like Ezoic, AdThrive, and Media.net. When you do that, that's when the real money starts rolling in. You're getting a lot of traffic and you are getting a lot of, of people clicking on the ad links. Now, now, in addition to AdSense, is you can actually do something called affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is simply recommending or selling other people's products and services. What you'll do is you'll find affiliate networks or affiliate programs that are congruent with, with your gardening niche. For example, maybe you're only talking about organic marketing. You're going to go out and find companies that have affiliate programs that are congruent with your, your audience. You're going to get affiliate links from them and you're going to post those affiliate links right in your blog post. When people click on those affiliate links and buy the product, you get paid a commission. Now, there are a number of places you can find affiliate programs, everything from Amazon. There are different seed affiliate programs if you are promoting different seeds or something like that. If you want to learn more about affiliate marketing, the third link in the description will take you over to a free course where you'll learn about affiliate marketing step by step. After making money, the next step, if we go back to our slide deck, is share on social media. Now, in my opinion, when you first get started, it is vitally important that you share your content on social media. The reason being is Google doesn't trust your content right away. And so what they're doing is they're simply comparing your content to blogs and websites that are more established. And they're just checking to see if the information that you're providing is relevant and accurate. Now, to help you get seen by Google and ultimately your, your target audience sooner, I recommend that you find relevant website, social media platforms, and share your content there. For example, in the gardening niche, you could share your information in Facebook groups or relevant subreddits as long as they allow you to do that. Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok, 
YouTube, Facebook, you name it, you can share your content there as long as people allow self-promotion. And when you do that, you're going to start building a core audience faster and then Google will come back eventually and help you out as well. After sharing on social media, the third question that I get a lot is how many blog posts should I write? And in my opinion, I think that you should write 50 blog posts before determining if your website's a success or failure. Now, the reason why I think 50 is a good number, A, you're gonna get very good at writing. B, you're gonna get even better at search engine optimization and keyword research. And C, you're gonna have 50 pieces of content focused on a singular keyword or topic, which Google likes. Um, oftentimes, people will quit writing after 10 or 20 blog posts. If you can put out 50 pieces of content, you're telling Google that you're serious and that you're ready to take this thing to the next level. What will happen eventually is you're, you're gonna start getting traffic, which will be incentive enough to keep going. So I think 50 is a, is a good number to start with. Obviously, the more you write, the better you're gonna get at it. So I recommend that you write for 50 days straight or write for 100 days every other day. So um, be sure to check out the three links in the description. The first one is to web hosting with Bluehost. The second one is to get a premium WordPress theme. And then the third one is to start affiliate marketing for free, a free affiliate marketing course. So be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell so that you're notified when I upload a brand new video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.